Everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, you're checking out a detailed guide to the Champion Points 2.0 system. What we'll be doing is basically breaking down builds for damage dealers, healers, tanks, and solo builds, showing you the best Champion Point stars to focus on, and then also starting at zero CP and going all the way to about 1200 CP and showing you the best order to unlock those in. So hopefully this helps. I know there's lots and lots of questions about Champion Points, which ones are the best to get for certain specific builds. And then real quickly, before we dive into these setups, all of my builds over on the website are actually up to date for Champion Points 2.0. So we can go to builds. Let's do Templar builds, for example. Go down to the Champion Points section. Everything is here for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 Champion Points. So if you're just getting back into things and want a quick setup, this is going to be the easiest way to do it. Also, we do have a written guide to go along with this video. So if you want to learn more about champion points, it's under guides, champion points. We have a whole section now dedicated to it. Tanking, healing, DPS setup, solo setup. These will give you a good overview of what the best champion points are for whatever role you're looking to play in the game. And then these give you some ideal setups as well for different champion point levels. So links to the CP guides will be down in the description below. Now let's jump into the best champion points for each tree. All right, so we've got our three champion point trees. I want to start with the green tree, which is called craft. And this is basically your utility quality of life champion point constellation. And for most of my builds, I don't really change this. I found what I like and I keep it pretty consistent across the board. Now I always start with Steed's Blessing. 50 points here gives you 20% bonus movement speed out of combat. That's really good. And then I also go with Gilded Fingers, 10% gold gain. Just any time, this is another great option. So with 50 points and 50 points, that's 100 green CP. That'll set you to about 300 overall total champion points, right? Now, as you're doing this, again, don't forget to slot your slottable stars this one, which is much brighter, you can see it says add to champion bar to activate. We'll do that, drag it or click it into there and you are good to go. From that point, we'll just work up a little bit. Uh, Fortune's favor increases the amount of gold from treasure chests. Wanderer, this reduces your cost of using way shrines. Steadfast enchantment, this makes your weapon enchants decay a little bit slower for each stage. So these are all pretty nice, simple ones. And then I will grab Treasure Hunter for 50 points. This increases the quality of loot from treasure chests. Okay, and this is another slottable star. So make sure you drag it up there. So now we're at about 200 green CP. That'll bring us to 600 total champion points. From there, if I have more, I like to go down here. Rationer, three stages here, 30 points. That gives me 30 extra minutes duration on food or drink. That's actually pretty useful. And then liquid efficiency, this gives you a chance of not consuming your potions. Uh, so I do like this one as well. Now, both of these, again, these are slottable. So bring those up. And there you go. So this is kind of my just basic overall setup. That'll take you to about 900 champion points. But like I said, this is going to be completely unique to how you like to play and what your build is for. There's many different things you can do here. Like for example, let's say you want to be more set up for crafting, then you would go up probably the center of the tree here. If you are like a sneaky rogue type, if you like playing that type in ESO, then you would go over here on the left. If you are more interested in like fishing, housing, then you'd want to continue up the right side. So there's lots of different options. Again, this is completely customizable to you. It doesn't really affect like how efficient your build is. It's more quality of life, but this is kind of the basic loadout that I will use. You'll see it on most of my builds, whether it's a DPS build, tank, healer, solo build, doesn't really matter for the green tree. Now the blue tree, yes, this is where things will start to get different. So let's talk about a DPS setup first. This is tends to be like the, the most simple way to, to do champion points. So for a DPS build in the blue tree, you're gonna start with precision. I like to put 40 here. This is increased crit chance. And then come over here to extended might. This is actually a sub constellation. That's what the purples are. 
So once you click into that, you'll get a new tree and then just 10 points into piercing. So this will unlock even more here in the sub constellation, but also it unlocks these slottable stars. These are our first slottable stars uh, in the blue and these are very good for damage, okay? So let's check them out. We've got Binding Aura, this increases your AOE damage. Thaumaturge, this increases your damage over time. Deadly Aim is single target damage. So we've unlocked 50 points so far. For your next 50, just focus on your main damage source. Let's say that you are playing on a Templar, for example, your main damage source is gonna be Puncturing Sweep or Biting Jabs. So you're going to want Biting Aura. You're gonna want to unlock that first. Remember it is slottable, so you'll put it on your champion point bar. And that's your main damage type, right? So already you've buffed your main damage type by 10%, okay? And we're up to uh, about 100 blue CP, so we're at 300 CP overall. From there, you can add these other damage types. So 50 into Thaumaturge, 50 into Deadly Aim. These get slotted as well. That'll bring you to about 200 or 600 CP overall. You'll notice we have one more slottable star here. So this is going to kind of depend on your build. By the way, these depend on your build as well. If you don't have, you know, any single target damage, you're not going to pick up Deadly Aim. Okay, remember, this is just kind of general guidelines. You're going to need to customize this a little bit more for your build. Uh, but what I like is Fighting Finesse. Okay, Fighting Finesse, if you put this here, this is going to give us 10% critical damage and 10% critical healing done. That's a nice option for the fourth star. Another option you can pick up is your max stats. So that's either going to be Tireless Discipline or Eldritch Insight. So Tireless Discipline is Stamina. Eldritch Insight is Magicka. Let's just pretend this is a Magicka character. So 40 points here. Notice this is a passive star. It's not slotted. So I can just get this without putting it on my bar. That brings me up to about 300 blue CP, or in other words, 900 overall champion points. Now, usually around here is where you've gotten most of your damage and can kind of start thinking about some defenses as well. But before we do that, one more damage star that you want to be aware of that's going to be back here in Extended Might. So if we go back here, remember we picked up Piercing. We go down this pathway, Flawless Ritual. This increases our chance to apply status effects. And then War Mage gives us another 100 passive spell damage to our magical attacks. So if this was a Magicka build, War Mage would let all of your abilities do more damage. Same thing on this side, you would get Battle Mastery and then Mighty if you were a stamina build. And again, these are passive stars, so you don't have to worry about slotting these. So we spent about another 50 here. That's gonna take care of most of the offense. Now for defense, jump into the Staving Might. This is another subtree. Drop 10 points into Quick Recovery, and this unlocks a lot of very good defensive passives, specifically preparation. If we put 40 points here, this is an 8% overall damage reduction uh, from any NPC. Again, this is passive, so this is really good. With that, that brings us all in to about 400 blue CP. That's about 1,200 overall, right? So we've got a very good damage setup. We also have some survivability. If you have more CP beyond the 1,200, then just put in more. You can put in more on quick recovery. You also have Hardy for uh, martial attacks. You have Elemental Aegis for magical attacks. You can reduce those damage sources by up to 4% with more points there. So that'll take care of the blue tree. Let's look at the red tree for our DPS setup. Red tree, I usually like to start out here with some sustain, so rejuvenation. This gives you extra recoveries, 50 points there. Boundless vitality, this gives you extra health. This can be nice, not that you need the, the extra health necessarily, but it gives you more options for running food. With this, plus the extra health that most builds have now in this patch, um, you don't have to run food or drink that includes health, right? You have more options, which is pretty nice. Uh, so these are the first two I would recommend just for general DPS builds. That'll put you at 100 red CP or 300 CP overall. From that point, we're going to jump down here to Sprinter. 10 points there. Hasty, just 8 points to get to that stage. And then Heroes Vigor, we can put about 30 here. That's even more health, and all of these are passive. Right, so none of these we have to worry about taking up one of our slots. And once we've unlocked Heroes of Vigor, this is great because we have all of these other slottable stars that we can choose from now. 
Now, in terms of sustain on your DPS setup, you're going to want to go with either Siphoning Spells for a Magicka build or Bloody Renewal for a Stamina build. Let's pretend again that we're a Magicka build. So this gives you up to 1,500 back of your main resource whenever you kill an enemy. Make sure you slot this. That's a, that's a really great uh, source of sustain. So now we're up to about 200 red CP, 600 overall. Some other options we have now at this point, we can go into Ironclad. This just gives us flat armor. This is a really good one, especially for stamina builds. I think if you have to be in melee range for your combat style, uh, this can help you take a little bit less damage. Or if you're a Magicka build, you might consider going into Bastion. Now for Bastion, we're gonna have to start with Shield Master. Just do one stage here and then put 50 points into Bastion. This increases the effectiveness of your damage shields. Uh, so that's very nice as well. You can come back at this point, fill out some of these a little bit more. You might want more um, health here from Heroes Vigor, maybe more sprint cost reduction. That'll take you to 300 red CP, 900 CP overall. You have all your slottables. And now you can just get some more passives. Uh, another great passive here is gonna be tumbling. This reduces your cost of roll dodging. You can also do defiance reducing the cost of break free. And again, you can fill out some of these a little bit more. You might want to max out hasty. That at this point, that puts you around 400 red CP, 1200 overall. And you've really gotten most of the passives and slottable stars that you'll need for a DPS build. All right, let's talk about the healer build next. This is pretty similar, honestly, to a DPS setup, except instead of focusing on your damage, you have another side of the blue tree over here, which is more focused on healing. Now we're gonna start in the same place, which is precision. I'm only gonna put 10 points in here to start. This unlocks the uh, left side of the tree, which is what we want. And then you can put 40 points into blessed. So we're at 50 blue CP overall. And then these are going to open up your more healing focused stars. So soothing tide is at AOE healing. Swift renewal is gonna be healing over time. And then focus mending, that's gonna buff our single target healing. So again, first, just focus on what you do the most. If your build is set up for AOE heals, do 50 points there. If you focus more on healing over time, do 50 points there. If you're a single target healer, 50 points there. Let's say that we have AOE heals. So that's gonna put us at 100 blue CP. Remember to slot that first one, there we go. Next, you can pick up these two, Swift Renewal and then Focus Mending, you can slot all of those. So now you're buffing every single type of healing that you are doing. And then we're about 200 blue CP or 600 overall CP. This is gonna unlock these final healing stars. Now, obviously we're limited here. We can only pick one of these. Rejuvenation, this uh, adds to your spell damage for your healing abilities. Cleansing Revival, this removes all harmful effects from a target that you heal that's under 25%. There is a cooldown on that. And then Foresight, when you drink a potion, the cost of your abilities is reduced by 75% for six seconds. These two, Cleansing, Revival, and Foresight are a little bit more situational, but Rejuvenator is gonna work all the time on your healer. So that is what I would recommend there for our fourth slottable. And then at this point, we can just come back and pick up more passive stats. So remember Eldritch Insight, you can get passive Max Magicka for your build 40 there. And then I'll probably come back and start building out my precision a little bit more. That puts us at 300 blue CP, so 900 total. Anything more, you can again go into this defensive subtree, put some points into quick recovery, unlock preparation. You can start building out some of these. Um, if you are closer to like 1,000, 1,200 CP, you can start filling out those. As far as the red tree on a healer build, it'll be very similar. I do recommend, again, starting with Rejuvenation for the extra recoveries. Boundless Vitality. Max out your health, that way you have more options in terms of your consumables. Ironclad is a pretty good option for a healer build. Um, if you don't want that, you could work up to Bastion again, assuming that you're using a damage shield on your healer. But let's just pick Ironclad for now, and then let's keep working up here, get some more passive health. So 30 into Hero's Vigor, that's gonna put me at about 200 red CP or 600 total. Now in terms of your sustain, uh, I don't think you'll get as much benefit. You need to kill the enemies to get you know, the siphoning spells. There are some more interesting ones here you can, you can kind of pick and choose. So if we went up to Tempered Soul, we can then unlock Spirit Mastery. This reduces the time it takes to resurrect an ally. That can definitely be helpful. And that is a slotted star. So you could put that in your fourth slot right there.
Doing that will take us to about 300 red CP or 900 total. And then like we did before with a DPS setup, we're just gonna go back and start unlocking some of these passive bonuses. Tumbling is always good. Reducing your roll dodge cost. Defiance for the break free reduction. And then again, filling out some of these a little bit more. Heroes Vigor, we can do Sprinter, we can do Hasty. That's gonna be our basic healer setup. All right, what about a tank build? Where do you start? Tanks are gonna focus more on this bottom area of the blue tree. These are where your defensive slottable stars are. Now, in order to get there, you're gonna to need to unlock a few of these. So you can either go down from Eldritch Insight, get more Max Magicka, or you can do Tireless Discipline, get more Max Stamina. Let's do 10 points into Tireless Discipline. You can see this unlocks our Staving Death substar. Remember those defensive passives are here. So you could put 10 points into Quick Recovery. You can do Preparation. Again, that's 8% flat damage mitigation. You could even unlock a few of these. You could put some stages into Hardy and Elemental Aegis for your first 100. So 300 total CP will get you a pretty good amount of defensive stars, and they're all passive so far, which is great. Once you're past that, you can start unlocking your slottables. I would focus on Duelist Rebuff. This is going to reduce your single target incoming damage by 10%. Make sure you slot that one. And then you can also pick up Unassailable. This is going to reduce your AoE damage, incoming AoEs by another 10%. So that's 200 blue CP or 600 total champion points. If you have more beyond that, you can pick up the middle one, Enduring Resolve. That's going to reduce your damage taken from damage over time effects. Third slotable star there. That'll unlock the next row. The best out of these three, in my opinion, that's going to be Bulwark. Uh, 50 points there. That increases your total resistances, either with the shield or the frost staff equipped. And again, that is slottable. So that's going to make up your four slottable CP, putting you at about 300 blue stars or 900 overall. And if you have more beyond that, you'll just want to come back to your passives and start filling those out more. So tireless discipline. If you want more stamina, let's say your sword and board up front for blocking, get some more stamina from that guy. And then you can go back into here. We can max out Elemental Aegis. We can max out Hardy. Uh, we could even max out Quick Recovery if we want. And that'll put us at about 400 overall blue CP or 1200 max CP. So that's our blue setup uh, for the tank build for red. I think like most builds, you want to start probably with health. So 50 points into Boundless Vitality. For my next 50, I like to go over here, Tireless Guardian. This reduces the cost of blocking. That's passive, so that is good. Uh, you can also put some points into Nimble Protector. It's gonna help you move a little bit more when blocking. So that's 100 red points or 300 overall. From there, you can go and unlock some more slottable stars. So Ironclad would be a good one. Go ahead and raise your armor a little bit. Remember we have passive health in the middle too. So if you go one stage of Sprinter, one stage of hasty, you can unlock Hero's Vigor. That gets you up to about 200 red CP or 600 total champion points. I do recommend picking up Rejuvenation at some point. This is gonna just max out your recoveries. That is a slottable star, so put that there. Then another very nice passive CP star fortification. Put 45 points into here, increase the amount of damage you can block. That brings us up to about 900 total champion points. If you have more than that, I would put a few into tumbling. So you could put like 30 here, you can get defiance, reduce the cost of your break free. Again, these are just passive, so you don't have to slot these. But this will give you one other nice slottable star down here, Juggernaut. This uh, reduces your damage even more when you're under uh, CC. So I would slot that finally. So that is going to be our uh, tank setup in the red tree. All right, last but not least, let's check out a solo build for CP 2.0. Very similar to a DPS setup, actually. Uh, we'll be starting with precision. I recommend maxing that out right away. And then we want to focus on our offense first. So about 10 points into piercing. That, again, is going to unlock our offensive slottable stars. And you'll want to, again, focus on whatever your main damage source is if it's an aoe ability max out biting aura if you have more single target focused abilities deadly aim let's just assume it's biting aura so that'll get us our first 100 blue cp or 300 total and then you can unlock two more here whatever you have for your build let's say that i have both of those so i might as well 
put those on. That takes us to 200 blue CP, 600 total. We have one more slotable star to pick up. So uh, if we want to focus on more damage, fighting finesse is a great option, especially if you have a fairly high crit chance, like 50% and above. Fighting finesse is going to be very nice. Now for our solo builds, we also want to be thinking about passive healing. And a really nice option for that in the CP 2.0 system is Reaving Blows. This is kind of like a mini Ring of the Pale Order, if you want to think about it that way. Now, it only works on direct damage, but it is, you know, free healing. Um, and if you have a lot of direct damage abilities, that can be nice. So let's say I'm going to go with that for my final slotable star. Then I'm going to unlock some more stats. Uh, let's say I'm a stamina build now. So I can unlock more max stamina. This is passive, so I don't have to slot it. This brings us to about 900 total CP. And again, at this point, or even earlier on the solo build, if you want, honestly, make sure you pick up some of your defensive passive stars. This one, preparation, is probably the best. Remember, you'll have to spend 10 points into quick recovery. So 10 plus 40, that's 50 there. Give us some good uh, defensive capability on this build. You may even think about going back at this point to unlock some more offense, like you might want more penetration. Uh, solo build, since you don't have a tank debuffing for you necessarily, more points into piercing might be good. And remember, you have those additional offensive uh, passives here, like Mighty for 30 points. This will give us a very strong overall setup for about 1,200 max CP. Now for Red Tree, I do like Rejuvenation to start with. So get some extra recoveries on your build. The Magicka, the Stamina, the Health Recovery, it's all good. And then, of course, our extra health. We will want that. So that'll put you at about 300 total CP. Now, usually next, you'll want to focus on some source of sustain. So remember, we can go up from Sprinter, Hasty, Hero's Vigor, get a couple of these. And then we have the options for our Sustain Slottable Star. So either Siphoning Spells for Magicka Builds, or Bloody Renewal for Stamina builds. Again, we'll pretend that we're Stamina on this guy. So there we go. That puts us at 200 red CP or 600 uh, total champion points. And now we have one more red slot left. We can choose to add some more armor. Uh, this would be good for like a Stamina build. If you are a magic build running a damage shield, then I definitely re recommend slotting Bastion instead. Stamina builds can actually benefit from Bastion as well, but let's say that I'm not running any damage shields. So instead I would run Ironclad for more maximum armor. That takes care of all of my slottables. And at this point I can come back and fill out some more of these if I want. So that puts us close to 300 uh, red CP or 900 altogether. And then if you have more champion points than that, again, get more passives here, tumbling, reduce your cost of roll dodge. Defiance, reduce your cost of break free. Those are some really good options there. So that's going to be our solo champion point setup. Again, we've gone over DPS, healers, tanks, and solo builds, what the best CP stars are for each of those roles. If you miss anything, feel free to go back. I will have timestamps uh, in the video for each of these different builds. Or if you prefer to see this in a written format, remember those written guides. I'll have a link down to those in the description and the pinned comment if you want to check those out. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Of course, if you did, make sure to crush that like button. Make sure you're subscribed for many more ESO guides and builds. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there. And I will see you around in the next video.